Okay, so welcome to this uh, next video in the uh, playlist on the theory of probability. Uh, in this video we're going to examine a um, an absolutely beautiful problem uh, involving joint probability distributions. Okay, so this is the problem. Uh, you have a chicken, so you have a chicken, one chicken let's say, and the chicken can lay a certain number of eggs. Uh, so. Uh, she can lay either zero eggs, she can lay one egg, she can lay two eggs, she can lay three, e three eggs, etc, 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 and it goes on and on and on. So can, she can lay any uh, non-negative real number, uh, well, non non-negative integer number of uh, eggs, basically. Okay, uh, and, um, and uh, so uh, if we draw our sample space, it consists of all those possibilities, i.e. Uh, here is uh, the possibility that the chicken lays zero eggs. Here is the possibility uh, the event that um, the chicken lays one egg. Here is the event that the chicken lays two eggs. Here is the event that the chicken lays three eggs, etc. And it goes on. Now, in each of these events, and I say events rather than outcomes because they are actually sets of outcomes. Because the outcome of an exp of the experiment isn't going to be how many eggs the chicken lays. What we're interested in is how many of the eggs hatch. So of the eggs that she lays, a certain number of them will hatch, and there's a bunch of different outcomes. So if she lays, uh, let's say, one egg, uh, there are two outcomes then. It can either hatch or it cannot hatch. If she lays zero eggs, then there's no, only one possibility for that, that she lays zero eggs and, um, yes, you don't get any chicks. Okay, uh, so there's one possibility there. Uh, in the case of two, uh, there are quite a few more possibilities. So the, the first egg could hatch, and the second egg could also hatch. The first egg could hatch, and the second egg doesn't hatch. The fir second egg, uh, first egg could not hatch, and the second egg could hatch. And then there's the possibility that both of them don't hatch. So for each of the uh, numbers of eggs she lays, there are a bunch of um, poss there are a bunch of e outcomes, a bunch of different outcomes, which are all in that event that she lays two eggs. Uh, so that's why I say that the uh, it's an event rather than an outcome. The event that she lays two eggs, and there are loads of outcomes here. So these things, uh, that she laid two eggs and that she uh, hatched uh, two eggs, uh, that's an outcome. Uh, this is an also an outcome, etc. Okay, um, and uh, again, uh, for the, if she lays uh, three eggs, uh, the outcomes are that the first one could hatch, uh, the second one uh, could hatch, the third one could hatch, the first one could hatch, the second one could hatch, and the third one could not hatch. Uh, and you could get the idea, you could go on that, like that. Uh, you'd have eight possible outcomes here because there are two possibilities for this egg, two possibilities for this egg, and two possibilities for that egg. Okay, so this is the question we want to know. Uh, what we want to know is uh, if we set up a random variable. So we firstly, we've already got one random variable, which is we could call it the random variable big N which is ascribing uh, to each of these events the number of eggs she actually laid. So it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6. So it's ascribing to this whole event, every outcome in this event, which is only one outcome, it's ascribing the number 0. To these two outcomes here, it's ascribing the number 1. To these four outcomes here, it's ascribing the number 2. To these eight outcomes here, it's all ascribing the number 3. Okay. And uh, we're, but we're not interested in that. We are interested in the uh, random variable which ascribes to each outcome how many chicks actually hatch. So let's call that the random variable x, uh, which is uh, the random variable of how many chicks actually hatch. So it's going to ascribe to every single outcome here uh, how many chicks are actually going to hatch, basically. Uh, so uh, to this one here, uh, this outcome here, where the chicken laid two eggs and both of them hatched, it would ascribe the number two. So again, uh, the possibilities are 0, 1, 2, 3, all the non-negative integers are possibilities. Okay, so we are going to assume something. We are going to assume that the number of eggs the chicken lays is Poissonly distributed. Uh, so that's an empirical fact, obviously. Um, it's probably not true, but we're going to assume that the chicken uh, is, um, you know, laying eggs um, uh, according to the Poisson distribution. So the probability that she lays on, uh, well, the probability that she lays this number of eggs, and the probability that big N is equal to little n, is, let's say it's Poisson lambda. So lambda is the mean number, the expected number of eggs she would lay. Uh, so the probability mass function that the number of eggs she lays is some little n is going to be equal to e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n, over n factorial. Uh, so we're going to assume that about our chicken, and we're also going to assume that the probability that any egg she, ha uh, she lays, so if she lays 
10 eggs, uh, we're going to assume that the probability of an individual egg hatching is fixed. I, if she lays 10 eggs, or if she lays 2 eggs, uh, and you take a single egg from the sample of 2 eggs and a uh, single egg from the sample of 10 eggs, the eggs are exactly identical, and the probability that they will actually hatch um, is uh, fixed, and it's, we'll call it a little p, little p. So p, little p is the probability uh, that a single egg will hatch. So if you have an egg in your hand, what's the probability that it will hatch? Probability that a single specific egg will hatch. And we're going to assume that all the eggs she lays are exactly, you know, exactly the same. I, if she lays ten eggs, it's not like those are going to be less good quality than if she just lays two, and the two eggs are going to have a better chance of actually hatching. Uh, it's not like that. We're just going to assume that the uh, probability that a single egg hatches is this little p. So probability that a single specific egg hatches. Okay. Uh, and what we want to know is uh, what is this random variable? How is it distributed? And moreover, well, the interesting thing about this problem is if we make another random variable, let's say big Y, which ascribes to every outcome how many of the eggs fail to hatch, uh, i.e., uh, so um, in this case, uh, ooh, it's difficult with that case, what? Uh, in, the, in how many eggs hatched, uh, none, uh, how many eggs didn't hatch, none as well. So this one would both be mapped onto 0 by x, and it would also be mapped onto 0 by y. In this case, here, where she laid one egg and it hatched, this would be ascribed the number 1 uh, by the uh, random variable x, because she has, uh, because the number of eggs that hatched was 1, and uh, it would be ascribed the number 0 by y, because the number of eggs that didn't hatch, i.e. the number of eggs that she laid that didn't then hatch, uh, is equal to zero, because she only laid one egg and it hatched. Uh, whereas this one would be ascribed the number one here, and would be ascribed the number zero here. So this is going to be, of the eggs that she laid, how many did not hatch? So here, you describe this zero, you describe this one one, this one one, this one two, etc. And it can vary, again, and it can take on all uh, non-negative integer values. Okay, so we know something. We know that the random variable x, big X plus big Y, which ascribes to every outcome uh, little s in this uh, probability space, it's going to ascribe uh, the number of eggs that hatched plus the number of eggs that she laid that didn't hatch. Well, that's just going to equal the total number of eggs she hatched. So that's quite a nice, um, quite a nice uh, little uh, equation in terms of these random variables that we have here. Okay, uh, so the problem is to find how x big X and big Y are distributed to find the probability mass functions uh, because we're very lucky in this case that it's a discrete, that both of these random variables, all of these random variables are discrete. Uh, we aren't dealing with continuous at the moment, so it's nice. We can work out with PMFs, which is very intuitive. Okay, uh, so the prob problem is to find these PMFs and what we want to, uh, what we would, uh, what we, uh, well, we can also ask um, about the um, joint PMF and what we want to see uh, is that these two random variables, big X and big Y, are independent, basically, even though they look like they should not be independent whatsoever, because surely if you ha uh, the number of eggs that hatch should affect the number that don't hatch, but the fact that we don't know, that we don't know how many, um, how many eggs the hen actually started off with, uh, actually perfectly counter counterbalances the fact uh, that X and Y seem to be related by this equation here. So the fact that we don't know big N and big N can take on any of these values is going to perfectly, uh, perfectly counteract the fact that they're related in this way. And it's going to mean that overall X and big X and big Y are actually independent random variables acting on this probability space. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.